Words of Radiance is the top reviewed book, not just fantasy book, book of all time on Goodreads with over 10,000 ratings. Oh, wow. Da, 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 da. Welcome, welcome everyone to To The Ramble Podcast. My name is Richard. I am Austin. And this is episode number 45, our Words of Radiance review. Yes, it is. I am quite excited for this one. I'm more excited. <laughs> Prove to me that you're ex- as excited as I am. Well, my excitement's at an 8.25. My excitement is a solid 8.26. Uh, well, that's uh, proof enough for me. Uh, okay. that, that's that's objective right there. I used, I used the rating system, so it's fair, right? So... Yeah. Words of Radiance is the second book in the Stormlight Archives. We already did a review on Wave Kings. The that was first about three months ago, right? Three months ago, Ugh. exactly. And we're gonna when we review book three to Stormlight, it's gonna be much sooner. We're we're not gonna have people yeah. wait because everyone was waiting for this review, of course. Oh yeah, all ten of them. <laughs> At least eleven people were like, "Oh, we really need this review," and like ten of those people were our family members. So fair. Yeah. So we had a Wave Kings review. We did spoiler free, spoiler full. We're doing the same thing with Words of Radiance. We're going to do completely spoiler free for the first 10 minutes. So if you haven't, if you read Way of Kings, because we're going to give Way of Kings spoiler, but haven't read Words of Radiance, we're going to go spoiler free on Words of Radiance. And then spoiler full, where we go everything, all of our thoughts about it. We'll give our rating, of course, as well. Yep. So that's going to be awesome. And we also did a Brandon Sanderson deep dive. We had another yeah. episode there. If you're interested in learning more about Brandon Sanderson, the GOAT himself, oh, uh, yeah. you can click uh, probably the link in the description or recommend we'll have it on. Here. Yeah, we'll have it on the thing here. We'll do something. Right. Put it some, It'll be somewhere. There. So we've talked about Sanderson a lot. He's one of our favorite authors. I'm putting words in your mouth. You'd agree with that. I the, would agree. He's one of my favorites. Yes, absolutely. Like one of my favorite authors ever. The dedication he has to his fans. And one of those amazing things that he does that we've talked about in the Sanderson Deep Dive is he constantly updates his fans, you and I, whereas, mm-hmm. you know, our number is one of our own fans right here. He constantly updates us with how he's doing on his books. And he just had an update come out about Stormlight Book 5, which is now 25% done. Wow, that's... In the first draft. That's basically like a whole novel. That's a whole novel that's for a, a whole normal regular author, novel. Right? Yeah. So I'm, I'm getting really excited for that. So we're going to have a Book 5 review when that comes out. I mean, yep. it's going to be at least a year, but still very excited for that. So want to get into words of radiance. I want to talk about the reception and awards. Let's oh. talk about what other people think about this. If you want to dibble sure. dabble. I also want to talk about real quick before we get into that, yeah. how the people at the time when they, when way of Kings came out, the fans had to wait at least three and a half years before. Right. Uh, words of radiance was actually dropped with it. Quite a long time. For way Sanderson. of Kings came out 2010. Yep, right. and this was uh, 2014. Okay. Now, you think, oh, wow, what has is, what is Sanderson been doing? Like, he's let his fans wait, like, whole four years for this? Four years? Well, in between, he released uh, the start of Mistborn Era 2 with Alloy of Law, and he also completed three <laughs> Wheel of Time books, the final Wheel of Time books in 2009, 2010, and 2013. So he was a busy boy. And- also small uh short fiction and short stories as well so busy writer but still for the fans of stormlight they had to wait three and a half years for this book and stormlight's not a normal sized book so the fact that it took four years should have george r r martin absolutely (laughs) absolutely appalled he should there's no excuse george okay georgie's got to get on top of it well, there are excuses he has excuses not good excuses not good ones yes okay we're on the same page (laughs) Yeah, for him, it's, you know, it takes it takes him however long it takes. Yeah. The problem is it's just people are losing interest. And the only people that are left are the people that are annoyed. I, I That's think... ultimately what, like, it's his book. If he ever writes it, he doesn't. Like, if he ever actually finishes it, that's up to him. We know he doesn't owe anything to anybody, but. Something tells me he'll be all right <laughs> when it gets published. Yeah. He'll have plenty of readers, though. Okay. Still. So. Now is it time? Reception Let's awards? go right into the awards. Let's go into this. So reception. I, I need to talk about reception real quick because outside of just our opinion, because if you read Way of Kings, you're wondering, what do people think of Words of Radiance? Words of Radiance is the top reviewed book, not just fantasy book, book of all time on Goodreads with over 10,000 ratings. 
Oh, wow. I didn't know that. So of every single book you could ever imagine, guess what's number two? A Harry Potter book. Who cares? About J.K. Rowling, one of the greatest writers. Nothing compared to Words of Radiance. J.R.R. Tolkien's number three with The Return of the King. Oh. Below the Words of Radiance. Sanderson has the number one rated on Goodreads with 10,000 ratings or up of all time. And that should Damn. tell you what people think about this book. A sequel. It's hard to follow up a really great and excellent first book, The Way of Kings, and he does it. And this isn't just you and I saying this, I, which both of us will say. It's better than the first. It is better than The Way of Kings, and we love The Way of Kings. Yeah. And it tops The Way of Kings. And people, the general public, agree. Hmm. How crazy is that? I didn't know it was rated that highly on Goodreads. A 4.75. With over 10,000. Over 10,000. Now, I'm Dang. sure there's like a lot of smaller books that are 4.8s, yeah. 4.9s, four but they don't have as much ratings and reviews out there. Mm -hmm. So it's more fair to get an accurate list of people so you have a larger sample size. And this mm -hmm. does it. I will say That's it, incredible to me. For people who know, um, I will say, this is non-spoilerly, but I, yeah. people who know, no. The no. scene, that's why everyone rated it five stars. And there's there's a lot more to say as well. That yeah, more, when we more. get into the spoiler section, it's going to get good. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> well, I also want to go on some more actual awards given out, uh, yeah. both nominated and ones he, the, this book actually won. Mm. Uh, the first one was the Whitney Award in 2014, where he actually did win the Best Speculative Fiction Award. Awesome. Some other books on that that were also nominated that Words of Radiance beat out was a couple books. Uh, the Darkness Comes by Mercedes Yardley. Pretty Little Dead Girls, also by Mercedes. Accidental Apprentice. And This Darkest, uh, The Darkest Light by Michael Brent Collins. How upset hmm. and just down was Mercedes? Just She had two, op two books to get there. She had two. She had two tries. She had and two, then, and she still lost. Oh, uh, if I was, I'd be like, oh, come on. Like, I had two raffle tickets. Ugh. I don't know. Um, I actually have not read any of those books, but I yeah. do know of the authors. They are very good authors. So it I did know. win out. Awesome. Um, it was also nominated in, on Goodreads Choice Awards in 2014. Did not win. How? <laughs> How do you get the number one Goodreads book of all time and then not win? I know. What? Well, Neil Gaiman actually won that for uh, short uh, trigger warning, short fictions, and disturbances. I haven't read that, but I know Neil Gaiman's fantastic, Neil Gaiman's a though. fantastic author. All right. Also, the one that I'm probably most excited actually looking into, yeah. and it's now become one of my new um, awards to look out for. Uh -huh. Like I, I like the Hugo Award. Hugo, If something has the Hugo Award, Gotta I'll give it. it a shot. Right. Anyway, it did win the uh, Hugo the David Gemmel Legend Award in 2015. Okay. And others nominated on that year was Half a King by Joe Abercrombie, Valor by John Gwen, Prince of Fools by Mark Lawrence, and The Broken Eye by Brent Weeks. All of those books might be here. They are, actually. <laughs> and if they're not here, they're behind me off Yeah, screen. I've read all of those authors um, for Prince of Fools. Yeah. I love Mark Lawrence as an author. Not a big fan of that series. I know it's well written, but just not my not my taste. But it now the fact that all of those were nominated that year means that I think that award is one of quality, or at least one up that ties into what I like. Now, do you think Words of Radiance should have won that award with all those competitors? Yeah, it does. That's how good this <laughs> book is. Yeah. And, <laughs> spoiler free summary. Mind if I dive into that? Of course, because. Words of Radiance, if you're coming from Way of Kings now, we have our three main characters, Kaladin, Shallan, and I hope I'm saying Shallan right, because sometimes people say Shallan, but we're going to say Shallan. I think it's Shallan. Shallan, right? So I always said it in my head, Shallan. Yeah. But I've heard Brandon Sanderson say Shallan. So it's confirmed Shallan, right? Yeah. So we have Kaladin, Shallan, and Dalinar, our three main point of views. Last book in The Way of Kings was primarily a Kaladin book. It's Kaladin's story with mostly Kaladin point of views and Kaladin flashbacks. Words of Radiance takes that, but instead it's Shallan. So Shallan has the majority point of view, and it's her flashbacks. That doesn't mean you don't get a lot of Kaladin. Kaladin you might have... Kaladin. So, so first to give on Shallan's point of view, though, she's coming off of... She's leaving Carbranth with Jesna, going to the Shattered Plains. And she has to deal and face with her past 
and some lies. And if you liked Shallan in Way of Kings, you will be gobsmacked in Words of Radiance. I I'll, would say on the non-spoiler non uh, part, side, yes. that is the biggest improvement oh, from Way of boy. Kings to Words of Radiance, where Way of Kings, a significant... Um, Detriment, would you say? Not detriment. To me, it, I don't. I don't. I don't dislike, dislike it. it but Dalinar and Kaladin were just so much better in Way of Kings, mm. and so much more fun and enjoyable to read about. That Shallan took a real backseat in that first. Book. They're also in more of the main storyline in the Shattered Plains, exactly. Where Shallan's more so a side stuff, you know, world building, card brand, and it's interesting. And by no means is it bad. I think it creates a great balance with the book, but it's not as exciting. You're definitely and right. The stakes are just not as high. Yes. You, you don't understand all the backstory really But that yet. changes. And that changes. Completely. Words of Radiance, she's up with, she's up there with Dalinar and Kaladin now. It's great. She, it, and every point of view, you're like, ooh. And her flashback, may I say, no spoilers coming, was the best flash, better than Kaladin's flashback. Yep. And so gripping and... You will react. I will leave it at that. You will react, and it's wonderful. The, the, Confirm the story is wonderful. Is, would this be spoilers? Like no, just if it, if you're I'll, asking, if you're asking, I'm please a, don't say it. All right, yeah. all right, all right. So that's Shallan coming in, and then we have Kaladin. Kaladin from the last book saves Dalinar in the Way of Kings, and now he is a guard. And Bridge Four are guards to Dalinar and the Colin family. So we're left off with this, and we're going to see. It's interesting because we also got hints from this in Way of Kings. Kaladin very much does not like Light Eyes, and now he is working to protect a Light Eyes. But is Dalinar worthy of his trust? Are Light Eyes can a Light Eyes be good? And Kaladin has to deal with this, this struggle, and we'll see where that leads in Words of Radiance, and leave it at that. For him, it's mostly a. And set in the first book, it was a more physical struggle. In mm -hmm. the second book, it's more of a moral, uh, ethical struggle with Kaladin. Mm -hmm. That's very well said. Very well said. And then we have Dalinar. Dalinar takes a bit of a backseat in this book. He is not as large of a part. If, and trust me, I want to say one more thing about Kaladin, actually. has the best moments in this book. So you will, yeah. you will wish you could read this book for the first time. After you finish reading, you'll be like, I wish I could read that for the first time again and again and again. But with Dalinar's point of views, his focus more on he gets more visions and there's a lot of world building and there's a curious time. There's some time requirement and there's a deadline and something something is mysterious. There's going a ticking on. clock. Something's afoot. There we go. Something's <laughs> afoot. And we now know he's with Navani and we'll see what political implications that has. And also, we know this from the end of Wave Kings, Teravangian sent Zeth to kill Dalinar. And What's going to happen there? I don't know. Well, yep. I do know. Yes. You do know. Many of the people listening probably know. They've read the book. Yeah, but if you're had reading to keep this, it spoiler free. Yeah, yeah. Had to keep it spoiler free, of course. All right. And then, obviously, you get a lot of add-ons. So, we'll keep that at spoiler free summary. But now, our spoiler free rating of the book. What did you rate the book, Richard? What did you rate Words of Radiance? Overall? An 8.45. You know what? I take that. You're going to take, take that one? I will take that, and I will <laughs> trump you 9.45 at a point. So you said 8.45? 8.45. 9.45. Dang. This wow. is This is my favorite series. It's better. Way of Kings, I gave a 9.2. I believe you gave. So you gave this higher than Wave Kings. We both did. Yeah. Love this book. I think it's an absolute masterpiece I, I really do and i'll leave it at that because i really want to get in spoilers before okay. you want to sure. get in spoilers that's now? big spoiler warning don't watch any further if you haven't read the book absolutely go read it now go read the series then come back yep. here absolutely you've been warned all right spoiler time spoiler time all right want to get category by category break let's go right into it let's so it. emotional impact i actually gave emotional impact a nine out of ten Nine out of ten. Nine out of ten. Beautiful. I, it's no qualms there. Yeah. It. It. There's so many that I actually were standing up and just cheering along. So, the moments alone, the and we all know the certain individual moments in the story, alone give it the nine. So the ten would be if I'm standing up the entire time. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's what I mean. There, there's interconnected stuff that's good and really awesome, but it isn't that ten out of ten for me. It's just, 
I just couldn't give it that 10. You could have given it a 9 5? Couldn't do it in a 9 5. Could have given it a 9 2 5. Nope. Why, why nine, not a 9 1, huh? Because I compared it to other things. <laughs> I don't know, man. We do the same thing. I know we do. So, <laughs> I gave I gave emotional impact a nine point five five. Okay, so phenomenal. And I think both of our at the public's everybody's favorite scene, the duel. Yeah, basically the duel is the most ex- at least the very most exciting scene. Oh yeah, yeah. It might be the most exciting scene I've ever read. For me, it's still Wheel of Time. Like Wheel of Time Has still has one it that over it. A few. Okay. Oh wow. Well, I haven't read Real Time, so maybe it's it's a long series. There, gotcha, there gotcha. better be a few. <laughs> <laughs> so, what did you think then? Of what were your other really exciting moments? Because we could talk about the duel and how phenomenal that was. And it, I mean, it was written yeah. perfectly. It was riveting to the point where obviously the four on one, then Renner and comes in at. Yeah. I don't. It's been beaten to death. It's just masterful. Yeah, it's uh, masterful. It's really well done with um the tension. Is just oh. really—it's a roller coaster ride because you, you go, oh well, Adeline, hey, he's he's a king of this. Like he's yeah. he's kicking butt, taking names. It's great. Uh oh, now it's four on one, and then like oh no, and then go hey, Adeline's not doing too bad. Like he's actually kicking their butts, and then they take they get a lucky hit on him, and he's now injured. Then he tries to yield, and then it's down further. They don't let don't him let him yield. yield. It's Ugh. just a roller coaster ride, and then just. Best, not best boy, but honor is dead. <laughs> but maybe I could do something about it. Oh. Oh. So obviously the dual scenes the best. Yeah. But other emotional moments. What what else well, got you behind this book? What else got you excited? Shall uh, so I was really interested in Shallant's past. So oh, Shallant's yes. past was just some of the most emotional stuff of like really Sh- gripping. Shallon. Shallon. Dang it! <laughs> I always say Shallon. Yeah, me too. I, I interchange. I know a lot. So Shalon, her past was just so gripping and tragic. Very much like an easy, it's a very easy to say that she has the most tragic past. Easily. Easily the most like tragic, disturbing, any word you can really think of. She's had it bad. Way worse than Dalinar, way worse than Kaladin. And Kaladin's been a slave. So. Yeah, that's it, that's so fascinating to say that a literal slave might have had an easier <laughs> life than Shallan. That's that's yeah. a good comparison because Shallan did not have it easy. And the big reveal at the end changes your whole perspective of the flashback sequences and Shallan's life. Yeah, which is great. The fact that she didn't just kill her father because her father deserved it in many ways, but then when you see why she killed her father, why her father was an abuser, it doesn't justify the abuse. It doesn't justify it, but you have a twinge of sympathy for the abuser and you understand oh, it's that's... it doesn't give you it's not a justification but it's more understanding yeah which is very very difficult to do I, the way that he's able to write that and make you somewhat empathize with this person who not not only abused shallan but then would abuse people around her yeah because he didn't want to punish her any longer and this is a character who we saw one of shallan's brothers comes in because he owes gambling debts, and these people are saying to the father, "Pay the debts, or we're going to kill your son." And the father just says, "No, leave my leave my house, leave," and lets his son go to die. Doesn't even care for his own children. Abuses his children. Much worse. That gets even more more into it. And yet, at the end, you somewhat sympathize with him. You understand. Yeah, yeah it sympathy maybe even is a strong word. Yes. But- you understand him a little bit. Understand's probably the better better word, yeah. Now, other moments for me was Kaladin swearing the second ideal with Moash. I, I would say, like, I even listened to the graphic audio oh, of yeah? that scene. It's so good. Nice. It's such a great uh, great interpretation yeah. and action of it. Um, also, Dalinar fights with Zeth twice on how much of an emotional ride that is. Both, like, so emotional is as in the... Did he fight with him twice? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Second time was when? first time in the hallway mm-hmm. when he tries to kill, tries to kill the king first, and then after on the shattered plains. That was Keldon that fought with him in the shattered plains. First fought Dalinar. Hmm. Oh, in the him? shattered plains, Zeth fought Dalinar. I yeah. Thought, oh, I forgot. He that was at about the end. to kill Dalinar, and then Kaladin oh, saved him. That's right. I didn't remember that being much of a fight. It was just Zeth kind of came down. And was like whoop. That was that was a little pee on Zeth's end. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I got. I follow. So. 
both emotional for the history that you know this person killed your brother and also mm-hmm. how action filled and how tension how much tension there is because Zeth is just clowning these fools you know and we already see how awesome Adeline and Dalinar are yeah so very exciting there as well um can overall the you... biggest the biggest thing was the improvement of uh Shallan uh, mm-hmm. From book one to two. I, I was That's just gonna... why I improved uh, emotional impact much higher than book one. Exactly. I was actually just going to ask you, is there anything, or can you tell me a scene that stuck out to you besides the duel scene that got you just as pumped? Was it that end battle chatter plane scene? Was there second to the duel? If you're to say, hey, if the duel didn't exist, this is my favorite scene. I would say it's probably Kaladin swearing the second ideal that or the mosh. entire Sander Lanch kind of thing. Like, sure. It's exciting. But the reason why I'm just have to put it above the rest is in the first book, a third of the book for me was a cut below the rest. In this book, all of it's the same. Gotcha. I in in Way of Kings, I was reading Shallan's chapter going, How much longer till a Kaladin chapter? In this book, I was happy whoever's part I was reading. Her journey was so much fun. And the mm-hmm. way she was able to she's now has to step up with Jesna dead and become confident like Jesna. She has to mimic her. And put on somewhat of a face and maybe try and show her abilities that she can do this. And she has to convince these people are trying to rob her that, in fact, you should help me get there. So they pay you a large sum, basically. The main thing is she now has real stakes. Yeah. Like, it much Absolutely. or much bigger compared to the first book. Yeah. But actually, let's actually go right into uh, characters because we're starting Char- to talk about that. I, I do want to say one more thing on the mm. emotional impact side. I like a lot of the smaller moments because it's hard to remember. The scope, the scope of the book is so large, so there's all the big moments you remember, but there's also tiny things. When you have Kaladin with Bridge 4, and you learn more about Rock, about Teft, Moash, and the interactions there. Also, the, the, tinier, the tinier details between scenes like with Adeline and Shallan, the dates they go on. Just the really good and cute interactions. And I, the bigger scenes, I was saying, I was talking about small scenes, but then my mind goes to the bigger scenes again, like the chasm scenes with Shallan and Kaladin. The whole chasm sequence was amazing. And you see the interactions between Kaladin, who hates Shallan, because she's more light as than Shallan, who hates people like Kaladin. It's just, there's, there's that interaction. And then the dates are awesome. And in the even bigger scene at the end, I have to touch on emotional impact. It was just so cathartic. Sadeus getting killed by Adeline. That, <laughs> that gave me lots of satisfaction. That was very cathartic. It's not supposed very. to, but it does. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now we can go on the characters. I had to All get right. that out. But character wise, what did you rate characters out of 10? A nine. Significant nine again? Improve- yep. Yeah. For the same reason, Fantastic. significant improvement over the first book because Shallan. Got it. I gave it a 9.6. Nine. So absolutely phenomenal. Very, very few effects. Compl- any complaint I would have wouldn't even be mentioned because there's no point when it's a nine six. So, I, yeah, I mean it really is like I'm. It's at that point it's preference. The only thing that could maybe be considered a uh, criticism is it's been a year out since I first read the book, mm-hmm. and I haven't read it again since. But I did read summaries to kind of catch myself up. Yeah. Before reading that, I could not remember really any. I, I couldn't remember Dalinar's plot. And at all. Radiance? I, I just couldn't. What did he do? I didn't remember any of it other than stuff mm-hmm. he was doing with other characters. So I remembered the when he was in, in the duel. I remembered him fighting Zeth with Kaladin and Adeline, but I didn't remember what he was doing. Interestingly enough, like, those were completely excised from my memory. Yeah, interestingly enough, I looked up and Dalinar was about 10% of the book. That would be why. So a much smaller portion. And his, yeah, his percent of the word count was even lower. That was percent of his point of views were 10%. Percent of word count was 7.5. So he was not the main perspective in this book. So he's he took a back seat. I think his portion, can you remember a lot that happened now that you read the summary and whatnot? I remember more. Gotcha, yeah. gotcha. But that's the only thing you could say is you didn't remember a lot what happened. Thing is, that's fairly justified. I don't remember much because right. he was barely, he wasn't, in it a lot yeah he's not the focal point so right so of course well, character okay now let's talk about why is it excellent why did you give it a nine what, what was so great um uh, basically the fact that each character struggles with their own mental illness or, or their own form kind of mm-hmm. thing, and how well it's portrayed so Sh- kaladin very clearly going through depression with shallan going with going through 
dissociation disorder and PTSD, and Dalinar addiction and trauma. And all of them kind of dealing with that, those issues is wonderful for character building. And so it, it's wonderful. It, it Really, those, those kind of issues make you really fall in love with the character and want you to follow that character because you want to see them get better because they're going through the same struggles that you know, everybody else is because everyone's kind of gone through a smaller version of what each of these characters are going through. So it's really cathartic when you see them make a step of progress toward it. Absolutely. And is there any standout besides Kaladin or Shallan for you? I like the little moments with Dalinar kind of avoiding alcohol. Okay. It's a small thing that's continued from the first book and goes into the second. But at parties on how he denies a lot of those things and how he forgets his wife and how he can't even remember her name and that, that mystery that follows through. Something traumatic happening so badly in your past that your brain actively blocks it out. Right. And so I like those little moments because it's not as dramatic. He can't as say others. her name when he's in conversations, yeah. right? And even when her name is said, he can't hear her. Yeah. So it's little moments that la- like that that make me really root for him. Mm-hmm. And so- something to note: you touched on this earlier with Kaladin, his arc is never the same at least for way of kings in this his arc has a similarity but it's not repetitive it's not the same story of kaladin's now it's more of a the first book was more physical this is now more mental struggle and i can't give spoilers in the future books but i this is very non-spoiler for the future books but his arc at the end of this book isn't dealt with again like it's it's solved you go okay doesn't mean that all of his life problems are solved and there's lots to do but it deals with his struggle of he still has to protect people even if he hates them. Even if he despises them, they need protecting nonetheless. Well, ultimately, it's Kaladin has the same problem through all books that he's in. But his arcs are not solving the root problem. Mm. His arcs are solving a symptom of the real problem. Yeah, yeah, good point. Because ultimately, the first book is not him solving depression. It's, no. Uh, it's getting getting over like kind of the symptoms of the physical symptoms of depression and with the second book it's more of him getting over the 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 cause of some of the causes he thinks of his depression he thinks uh, he's, it's external right he it's thinks because it's because of these light eyes because of so amaram he's has to get over his externalization of his own mm-hmm. internal problems yeah and so that's another symptom at the root of it third book he goes through something similar it's same thing he's never solving the problem he's solving symptoms mm-hmm. kind of the same thing with shallon she has just di- shallon oh dang mm-hmm. she's dealing with the symptoms and her learning magic and her learning to ha- like split her personality and be different people so she pretends to be jesna she pretends to be like her mm-hmm. when she has to investigate um amaram she pretends to be other people. She pretends to be Vale. Yeah. All of the stuff is solutions to solve the symptoms of her problems. Mm-hmm. And so it's kind of interesting. Each She's book, a lot like us in many ways. Like, we pretend to know what we're talking about. Don't we all? <laughs> <laughs> so I relate to Shalon on so many levels. Yeah, why do you think I have all these books behind me? It's a external representation of, hey, look how smart I am. I've read all these books See, exactly look at me right <laughs> internally i just have like a sad pile of books that i still haven't read yet i'm like oh god let me let me turn into my other personality <laughs> zoom into there so exactly you got a great point there and I, even even with some of the minor characters i love that we got more on the army deserters of gas mm-hmm. and v- v- vatath i believe that sorry his name was <laughs> vatath i believe his name is and little moments with Venerin. You, he gets a lot of moments here. You figure out he's a truth watcher, and he's really and what is going on with him, and very mysterious yeah. in this book. And you're you're wondering a lot here. And we get one of the world building aspects, which I'll, I'll talk more in the world building section. But Tom, the mm-hmm. herald that's that's now completely suffering eternal torture and PT- there what's the word for it is that he can't even form a sentence because of how horrific his torture was in his past but 
just a, a lot of these characters build up with it, but obviously the focal point, Kaladin, Shallan, Shine, above yeah. all. So anything you want to mention in characters, or are you satisfied? Overall, I, I did want to add in kind of in the last part, is yeah. Sanderson is incredibly good with all of his novels. And I, I think everything that I've read of his, he's really good at making characters that you really like, and he's really good at making characters you really don't like. And you're, you're one way or the other. Yeah. You vary up, it's... But here's the thing that he doesn't do, and maybe this is a choice, Ooh. but you ve- you don't often have a variety. He can't really take a character you really like, make him make you not like them, and then make you like him again. They often it's a character you like him, you're with him all the way to the end, or you hate him, you're against him all the way to the end. I'll push back on that a little bit. Who I think has an arc especially. Oh, that's spoiler. Oops. <laughs> that's... Got to bleep that one I gotta out. Got to bleep that one out. Okay, I had to bleep and out. I, I want to say I bleeped out the name just because it is a spoiler for the next book. And also, you to speak? your point, I don't think it's done well. Oh, that's you don't the think one... so? I don't. Uh, I, I okay, still don't we'll like talk about that. The character. We'll talk that you about that about. in Oathbringer. Yeah, but so... the name is bleep, so you might not. You might not know what character we're talking. Counterpoint. About. You're wrong. Uh, <laughs> counterpoint. You don't like that. Okay. I don't so think it's done well. Him and but I think up the words of Radiance this isn't spoiler going for, but Teravangian is more so he sends the assassin to kill Delinar, of course. But you're wondering why and what his motivations are, and I think again, I I can't get more into spoilers because yeah, I think you're right. Wave Kings and Words of Radiance, there's less I love a character, hate a character. But maybe Moash would be a decent example of someone that he was bridge for and you loved him. And he was with the team, and then all of a sudden, wait, you're going to kill the king? What's going on there? You go from with, liking a character to hating him. I would say with him, it's more of like he's a background He's not like a big, important character in the first book. It's Even that, it's like he's a part of Bridge 4, you like him. And then now you really hate him. There's not much variety there. Like mm-hmm. I'm, I'm saying it'd be some authors do it. it. Again, this is probably mostly a choice. And... I'm just really impressed with authors that they can take someone that you like as much as Kaladin. Yeah. Make you dislike him. Then make you okay. like him again. And like that kind of roller coaster of emotions is really hard to do. So you're saying more so of the main character point of views, like your three main three, Kaladin, yeah. Shallan, and Dalinar, you're always rooting for them. Exactly. Okay, that yeah. So you dislike that about it, or you just think uh, you do you prefer books where you change your like to be them? fair it's mostly a preference like okay. it's a preference of probably the author of what the story they want to tell right i just think it's very it's more impressive to get a character you really like and make them do something awful make you dislike them and then get them get you to like them again i think that's really hard playing with the reader's emotions on their favorite character is risky and when you do it well it's just so impressive yeah but i, I think both are good Right, why can't yeah. why can't both things be great, right? Main thing is just impressiveness. I'm just impressed more okay. when someone can do that. Would you say that it's a negative of Sanderson's or just a comment? Because is it more so a I wish there was I wish there was more I think here for I my... wish there was a bit more of that. Maybe not okay. with every character, but just play with our emotions yeah. a bit more with our characters. Instead of just I we're always you. rooting for them. Give them make them do something really reprehensible off. exactly mm. and that, there's you're, some you're real looking, choices you're, that george R. R. martin's coming out of you yeah See, a little bit because then i mean you got the tolkien s stories of i mean aragon's aragon legless yeah. legless gimli's gimli you're rooting for the good guys there's good versus bad and it's very clear i think Sanderson, i like that too so george R. R. martin does it like with basically every character <laughs> yeah <laughs> and uh you know tolkien does it with none of the characters mm. i would i like it a little bit in some in some aspects take a risk so with a what character. you're saying is tolkien is not good is what i just heard you say i guess that's what you heard <laughs> all right on the on the fly okay to be fair it's mostly a preference no i, I got you I, it sounded I, I was just fishing out to see where where you're going with that so that makes sense it, I, it's I mainly i'm it's an observation of what sanderson does yeah, yeah. and what he doesn't do okay that that's very fair and i when we talk Oathspring, i i'm really curious about the character that we bleeped out we yep. get there. So, all right, plot time. You ready for this? Yep. What did you rate plot? An eight point seven five. Pretty fair. I gave it a nine point one. 
Yeah. We're pretty close, but I mean, I'm not sacrilegious. I would never give Sanderson score below a nine, even though on <laughs> Way of Kings, I gave one score below a nine. So I had to give them nine one and we're very close on our score here. Why yeah. did you give it that high? What, what was great about the plot? I mean, pace pacing is much better. The plot is interesting in all three parts. Again, Shalon brings it up the whole time. Like that's a, that's a statement to all of these scores. Shalon brings it up. Mm. Um, I think because of everything is well paced, even if something's not particularly action packed, everything is interesting. So everything kind of applies. So the flashbacks apply more to the present day, which is more enjoyable than mm-hmm. in the previous book. Um, the two things I guess of negative would be Moash's plot line. Hold on, being hold on. Pl- hold on. For an 8.75, you gave one positive. Hold on, hold on. I hold have on, hold things on. in the wrong order. Wait a second. I'm sorry. Wait a, wait a second. So here's my 8.75. Here's one positive followed by two negatives. Okay. You are I have bastardizing the... the review system. I have the wrong order here. <laughs> After those things, the standard. There's more good things, right? Yes. Right. The Sander Lynch just, is just, amazing. It's just, it, you're, you are helping a reputation so much with, like, these guys are just assholes. <laughs> they, in they, general, yeah. <laughs> so, but, okay, okay well, what were your two negatives? I'll, I'll let you go. Take the stand. No, I'll, 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 I'll give all my, get all the positives. No, listen. Way. Don't don't listen to me. Who am I? Just go ahead. Negatives. Go no, ahead. Fine. We're getting back in the way of kings <laughs> where, like, you started going negative. You know what? I'm not going to go there. Go <laughs> the Moash, Moash's plot line felt a little forced. A little forced? Okay. Like, I thought it was a bit, like, the plot convenience I expected better of. Sanderson. You know what's hilarious? The one negative you just mentioned. Yeah. Was that's my one tiny criticism as well. Yeah. It was just a bit um, expected, I guess, which isn't necessarily bad. But what? And sorry to interrupt you on your your second mm-hmm. one you're going on. But just wanted to say, with Sedeus in the first book was done so well, and that twist was done so well because the I won't go I won't re- repeat what we said in the last video, but the twist was done well because you believe that he wouldn't at the end because it kept changing between you believe Dalinar, then believe Adeline, then believe Dalinar, whatnot. With Moash it was very straightforward and You knew it was coming. You knew it was coming, not terrible, but also not like ten out of ten phenomenally done, right? Yeah, especially with Moash being like, Yeah, he's the friend of Callum, but we don't get a lot of time and connection between the two. Very so good it's not point, as yeah. much of a stab in the back like yes kaladin feels the stab in the back you didn't feel it as much we don't feel it like the audience doesn't feel as much where i think that's very fair yeah if he was more of a main character or he was built up more in the first book of being like the real brother to kaladin right like if it was rock if it was rock it would have been way more of a stab back not that because i don't think that fit for rock's character and role but we're just saying if Moash had the kind of page time. And yeah, the page time and the kind of camaraderie you have with Rock and the exactly. kind of empathy you have with him, right? Moash was always standoffish. He yeah. was always the standoffish one and he came to reluctantly like Kaladin. Yes. And he was the guy who would tell Kaladin how it is. And mm-hmm. he was he didn't worship Kaladin. He was actually a threat. The reason why Kaladin liked him is cuz he didn't worship him. Right. He was willing to, you know, tell him how it is. Yeah. So it, it doesn't. It doesn't hit you as much. Yeah, yeah. I'm and then, with my nine point one. I'm with you there on the Moash tiny criticism. Yes. Yeah. The second one for me is more in retrospect. Is Dalinar's plot like I, I completely forgot. Okay. Like I forgot almost everything that Dalinar was part of, which made me so. I was like, dang, how do I not remember anything? I have to put that in plot. If I can't remember it, okay. That's a that that's just a negative at a year out. So You know what? I think that's just a negative for your memory skills. That's I think I'm going to rate your memory a 5 out of 10 at best. So <laughs> Okay, so those are your two t- criticisms. Let's get back into the positives. Positive Sander Lanch was amazing. Sander that that was amazing, yeah. The ending was phenomenal. A bu- all these things piling on top of each other. I mean, you have the the reunited duel with Zeth. You have um Kaladin swearing the second ideal in Moash. You find the finding of it through. Rithru. You have the Parsh, uh, Parshman turning into the Voidbringers. Or, yeah, the Voidbringers. And so, all this is amazing. Action. I, I'd even consider Adeline killing Sedeus. That's more. That's one of the yeah. end chapters. Still, that's the avalanche. Bang, bang, bang. Jesna being alive at the end. Which, that plot point at first... Let me ask you, what, what do you think about Jesna in the beginning dying and then coming and actually not being dead at the end? Yeah, I mean, it's a it's kind of a cliffhanger, but because Jesna was not super important in the second book, it doesn't feel as jerking you around. So if 
say like a main character died and then is brought back at the very end. Right. I'd feel a little cheated. But okay. because Jessen died really early on in the beginning and then basically we had to just move on without her. Yeah. You don't feel cheated as much. Gotcha. And, and especially the fact that her dying in the beginning as well was so critical to Shallan's growth in this book. She died for a purpose. So Sanderson, obviously, the genius, he yeah. wrote this so that Shallan could then become, oh, no longer Jesna, the, the confident stick up for herself problem solver. She now has to fill that role and grows. And you that's why we start to love Shallan so much. And she's so active as a character. And then when Jesna comes back at the end, what that does for the next book, and not no spoiler for Oathbringer, but what you can presume that does is, oh, with Jesna back, how does that affect Shallan now that she's has Jesna back? All that character growth happened. Is, does she take it back? See, what the, happens there? The real problem with bringing back a dead character is mm-hmm. often it negates all of the growth that the, char- that the other characters have to go through. In this case, it does not. It actually inspires new growth. Like, oh, what does this do now? Right. Actually, I think a character that probably shouldn't have been brought back or is more cheap being brought back with Zeth. So in the very first edition of Words of Radiance, Zeth's actually killed. Like, Wait, dead dead. That's spoiler, I think. Nope. Does he come? Is he alive at the very end of Words of Radiance? Do we know that? Yes. Oh, okay, okay. I thought that it was, was the beginning changed. of Stringer. In okay. the second edition, the mm-hmm. one that's most pop- popular, it's... There's a scene, like, it's cut off your hands, Mm -hmm. and then, like, healed and all this. But, like, it was because Sanderson then was like, hey, I'm going to use him in the next book. He went back and changed it so Zeth doesn't die, and it's a Uh, fake out death. Ah, okay. I think that's probably a cheaper pullback than Jesna. It was was done more in retrospect as well, so possibly. Okay. And in, in terms of, I think, what would be a really bad, um fake out death would be like Zadeus. If at the very end, you know, so like, hey Zadeus actually lived. Mm. That would be definition like really cheap. Gotcha. Oh yeah yeah yeah. yeah no, I, I'm definitely. just showing like how that mean. would be a bad one. I think Jesna's a pretty You good liked Jesna's. Yeah. Yeah. And to your point, Wave Kings I think is the only category where I rated plot higher than Words of Radiance. Still loved the plot in Words of Radiance and did so much for the world, had so many great scenes. But one thing that I just love about the Stormlight Archive and the structure of it that the at least we haven't mentioned thus far in all of our Sanderson videos is that the very first scene of Now Wave Kings and Now Words of Radiance looks at Gavilar's death scene. That's yeah. such a cool prologue to go get a different perspective of the same scene is so neat. Yeah. To get a completely to get new information and then we're brought into five distinct parts in the book where you know a Sander Lanch is coming. It's such a unique way of writing and you have several climaxes throughout the book, several beats and moments of excitement because, like in this book, the end of part one, we have a Shonai and the rest transforming, I believe. Then end of part two, we have Zeth attack and the ghost bloods right, writing back with Yuruthiro because Shallan kills Tin. That, that whole thing, the, the, sla- the slaving caravan now, she's getting close to the Shattered Plains. End of part three, the duel. So you have these moments you can kind of pinpoint each part of a climactic sequence that doesn't, it doesn't feel like, it, it obviously is a long book, but you never feel like you're dragging on. It's not, it's not a, uh, it pays off and it should pay off because it's that long. It's a definition of what I call a slow burn, right? Because it's, it's really getting you involved until you have the avalanche upon all avalanches. You thought you liked the end of part one. You thought you liked the end of part two. Wait until I show you this scene. It's well, like that. A slow burn has to be well paced. And often a slow burn just means that action is not going on every second. Where There's stuff that's intriguing. If it's either, like A book mm. has to either be intriguing or exciting. It's one of those two. I don't think there's any other thing a book can be other than that. It's like it's either intriguing, exciting, or boring. And it could be intriguing for a lot of reasons. It can be intriguing so. for a lot of reasons, but it has to do those things. In Way of Kings, with some of the Shallan parts, I didn't think it was in- intriguing or exciting. There are parts of that. There wasn't many, so it's still good. But with Words of Radiance, it was either intriguing or exciting. 
Okay. There were no boring parts, which is why it's paced well. Gotcha. Gotcha. Well, awesome. Anything else you want to touch on with plot? No. Let's move on to dialogue. Okay. Dialogue slash prose. Probably a disagreement because I know what you gave dialogue prose on last video. Uh, what's your dialogue prose? Right. Huh? Give it a solid eight. Oh, that's not that bad. Yeah. M- maybe my memory's failing me. Okay. I gave it 9.5. Yeah, it, I think it's better than Way of Kings. Gotcha. And because... You're more well-read. Austin, listen, I've read a lot of books. This is definitely an eight, because you have to understand. (laughs) There are other tens and nines out there, little child. (laughs) Right? You can't just have this as a nine-five. Are you crazy, Austin? Have you read The Wheel of Time? Have you read The Name of the (laughs) Wing? You are our audience when it comes to book uh, for movies. No, no, no. I'm just making And I'm us when it comes to books. Listen, I'm just making... I'm just arguing for you so we can get it out of the way. All right? Sure. Listen, I'm going to tell you why I rated this a 9.5 in just one line. Honor is dead. Yeah. It's a good line. I could have given it a 10 from that line. (laughs) Ultimately, for me, it's peak modern writing. It's it's very fast, but not very subtle. Yeah, yeah. That's also what it comes down to, is... There, there's Wait, not no, much not... subtlety with it. Uh, okay. All right. All right. All right. By All right. subtlety, I mean layered writing and dialogue. Typically, it's just not that kind of book, and there's going to be a certain cap on what I rate it. I see. Okay. It's kind of like how there's a bunch of movies out there that are super fun, but is not – I can't give it, like, the, the cost. It's not Casablanca. Like, Bullet Train. Very fun. Really enjoyable. Is it Casablanca, though? No. No, it is not. Like, there's certain standards I have for it. I think that his dialogue and prose, it's so easy to read. Mm-hmm. And I mean that in a very good way. And it does the, it effectively does what the Way of Kings does as well, where his prose is very similar and easy to read, builds up these exciting moments. And what's really impressive is that he's able to capture your attention and make it such a fast, quick read for the amount of quantity we have in a 400,000 word book i also hold him to a standard of when if we're talking about a novella or a shorter book where you can get really polished and every word and every line can be have several metaphors and be really really interesting there's a certain standard of a book being 400,000 words in an epic fantasy where it does exactly what it sets out to do and that's why i think mm-hmm. it's so impressive and I know you're not disagreeing. We disagree on minute points here, really. It's a it's a slight different disagreement, but yeah. I actually do agree with you on that point. Oh, you do? Okay. But I don't give long books a curve. Oh, okay. That's the thing, is, yes, I think novellas have an advantage. I wouldn't say it's a curve, I'm saying. But, but my point yeah. is, I hold the same expectations mm-hmm. for a novella and a very long book. I, okay, I see. And it's harder. I it see. is much harder. I, I fully acknowledge that. Okay. However, I've read something like Name of the Wind. Right. That's a chonker. That's okay. a chonker of a book, and it's polished to a T. Gotcha. It took him forever. It took him forever oh, to that's get not that to say. That's not to say Words Rains isn't polished. I know. Yeah, but, yeah. like, with Name of the Wind, there's a, there's a ton of layers, references. It is – there's no better way to write a sentence kind of thing where it gotcha. is just so clean. It's such a cleanly written book, and i got to give that one credit. Now, is it easier to polish a Discworld size book? Yes, much easier. It yeah, takes yeah. way less time. So I acknowledge the difficulty, but I'm just saying when it comes, if you're conquering, if you're trying to challenge a 400,000 word book, that's probably going to be the one that suffers. Gotcha. Okay. And I, I didn't mean to say that uh, if I did say this, that it's not polished or not as good as like a novella. Um, with its prose what i think is impressive about it is that it is that long of a book and effectively does what a shorter book does like it's that quality and i'm i'm Mm. just so impressed by that and maybe when i read name of the wind my perspective will change a little bit i haven't so i've read such a weird book for me like i i acknowledge that the writing is better than sanderson but you don't like the like the the prose and dialogue is better yeah 100 percent is but everything else about the book sucks not that's sad that's a weird conundrum for me. Like, gotcha. I'm looking forward to Patrick Rothfuss writing something else. Like, another series completely different. None of these characters, what you're saying? None of these characters, none of this plot lines, none of this. Okay. I will be floored. I will be picking up that book. But 
solid solid okay dialogue pros we're just you know you're just yeah. more well read okay that's it we we got to, we got your dialogue pros what is your world building rating 7.5 this is where this was from way of kings where we disagreed a lot yep and it carries over it's better than way of kings what would you give way of kings oh, do you remember i don't remember i think i probably give like a 7.25 oh my god or seven Oh, that's why we argued. A lot. Yeah, probably. <laughs> well, you gave world building on Words of Radiance a seven point five. Yeah. So I gave it a nine point five. Yeah. Again, fun. So your world building rating really does lower the overall book. Yeah. Significantly. It does. All right. So that was to the ramble, everybody. <laughs> we will catch you all. <laughs> I don't want to do this again. I don't want to do it. <laughs> Ultimately, I actually did try and think about it. Why I rated this slow? Yeah. It's Ultimately, it's stuff that is lacking. That it it is so big, mm. but it feels very empty. Oh my god, you're breaking my heart. I, I'm look. There's a bunch of stuff in the modern. There's a bunch of stuff there. It, it's very big in scope in modern day. Mm. A lot of stuff going. There's different hybrids. All the stuff going on, and then there's basically one event in ancient history that we have, and there's thousands of years between then. And there's not much there. Like, there's not much of a connection and through line between then mm -hmm. and now. Where there's uh, there's other stuff like Lord of the Rings, where you see the from the very beginning to the very modern day in that world, you see the connection through line. And you see how cultures have changed and how people have changed. Or with Wheel of Time, the exact same thing. Where in Stormlight, you don't as much. Oh, well, I came prepared, Richard. You came prepared? On our Way of Kings video. Sorry, I was looking down at the computer because I had to go click on our Way of Kings video. Yeah. And look at a comment from Adam C. from two months ago. And you know what he said to you, Richard? What did he say? He said, and I quote, Adam mm -hmm. C. said this. <laughs> I think the history question is answered in later books and maybe even addressed in this one referring to the wave king the desolations were coming more and more often and so they lost progress after the final desolation they were finally able to begin progressing again but at that point they were basically back to the stone age look at real human history the stone age lasted two lasted two million years and we have no written record of it the bronze age finally started five thousand years ago and even that we barely have fragments of it it's mostly just artifacts we use to reconstruct that time with some basic written records like hieroglyphics I will say, yeah, there's some of that, and there's a, maybe a reason. I do want to point out, the Wheel of Time goes through literally the same thing. The exact, uh, this is prologue level stuff, that there is some type of destruct, like, basically, this advanced society, everything, mm -hmm. everything's back down to zero, and then some time passes, and then modern day, when the book picks up. Mm-hmm. That's very similar, but from those points of early, you know, Stone Age where everything is back down to zero, you actually do still see cultural changes. Why is this group of people the way they are? Why are these groups of people? Why is the Alethi so? Why violent? are the Eri like this? The Reshi like this? And the, okay, what? How do they develop these cultures? In Stormlight, they just do. They there are different groups of people. They operate differently. Why? I don't know. Were they once one people and they separated due to certain factions? I don't know. Well, listen, Richard. There's In this very book, there's not much of that. Richard, it, to me, it seems like a lot of stuff Richard. in ancient history, a lot of stuff in modern history, and there's not much in the beginning. And then for the modern day, there's t not too much of like a reason for their being. Well, listen. They just are. So it's large, but not very deep. So listen. Except the magic system. Max system is very deep. Listen, though, listen, though. Adam C. is not here to respond. You're being unfair. I know. You're attacking a commenter who's not in front of you. How, how can you do this to our fan? This is your fault. You brought him up. Listen, you're supposed to take it and go, you know what? Our fan is correct. I am robotic. <laughs> you're supposed to be nice. <laughs> I've got another guy. Malcolm Hodnett said this yeah. to you in the last video. You ready for oh, this? okay. It's not over. <laughs> so he said, those world printing critiques sound more like nitpicks. Yes. He keeps going. <laughs> Canonically, kind the history of the world is fractured due to the desolations, and we would only learn more as the characters we follow learn more, but they haven't yet. 
here's the thing. There is a reason. It's just not a very interesting one. So, like, I'm not going to give it a super high score. Where... Shame. It's a shame. I, I'm, I'm sorry. It's not a Lord of the Rings level of world building. It That's 10. Don't you That's the that. 10. Listen, yes, it is. You yes, think Lord it's a 9.5. Yes. You think it's 0.5 away from being as intricate world building as lord of the rings i think lord of the rings is the perfect 10 and why this deserves a 9.5 you want me to explain why yeah why does it deserve only 0.5 off because i knew this would be the most talked about section i brought a list i brought receipts okay <laughs> and i brought every world building thing i could possibly remember and look back to the summary and put mm -hmm. down of why the world's so fantastic to me and this is let's put aside the things we've learned and built up for words from Way of Kings, such as the, the different mm -hmm. animals we see and plant life cultivation and so forth. There's a lot of that, the smaller things that build up to it. But I think the magic system, which you'd more so agree with, I'm mixing, I'm with mixing magic, magic and world in this ex explanation. Oh, yeah. No, it's so, a significant part. Like, yeah. I don't think it's bad. It's still 7-5. That's oh, I got several you. cuts above the rest. I just when I, when I look at this and all these things I'm about to say come from when I think of Roshar and just even from this book specifically, it is so lived in and I he follows his three rules of magic and I would even extend that to world building for him. His three rules of magic, one of them go deeper, not wider, which I feel like when you said it wasn't deep, I'm like I'm shocked because I think he goes so deep into the world building that makes it interesting. Now Tolkien, of course, being a ten out of ten, goes deep and why he does it all, like he. Tolkien's Tolkien. That's a level that is kind of untouchable. So we're getting there. But why? Why this is? Why this is one of the greats to me? Is we have the Wind Runners and Light Weavers' ability with Kaladin back to Shallan, and every we learn about the ideals and how to actually light weave. And the book she's given, she's given the Book of Words of Radiance from Jesna. And each quote at the beginning of every chapter explores more about we find out about Bondsmiths and. Dawn, dawn chance we find out about in, in those as well initially so that's some of it and we have Kaladin with Sil, with Sil and the shards etc and I loved I absolutely loved oh also we learn we get introduced to cryptic the uh, yeah. cryptic's pattern so we see pattern for the first time we're like what is this is uh, something similar to Sil and the santid creature at the beginning I was talking about but one thing I loved with the shard blades and from Adeline's point of view was the different battles that they had, we started learning different stances and different ways to train with it. And Kaladin, um, sorry, not with Kaladin, with Adolin, and learning Iron Stance, Wind Stance, and how to win these different battles and how he was able to triumph. And then we learned more on Vornism. Now, I can't get into specifics because there's things that overlap in the Oathbringer, I believe, as well. Yeah. But we learn more about Vornism with the Day of Recreance. We see the Day of Recreance through Dalinar's vision. And his visions throughout the whole story, we learn more about this ancient past and what's going on here. And I we, actually don't we learn dis all this stuff. Oh, no, I'm, I'm still, about. I'm I still going. I'm, I'm, I got more. Yeah, okay. I got more. All right. Keep going. Listen. Army deserters. I thought that was such a beautiful touch to the world building as well. That we see oh. Gaz and Vatoth and that. Oh, oh. Okay. So we see we see Gaz and Vatoth and how it just doesn't look at the war angle of it. Of like, oh yeah, this this affects things. And there's people that leave the Shattered Plains and Shalon runs into them. We have Wit, ever-present Wit, and also Zahel, who's a little bit interesting and curious. But we see Wit, mm -hmm. and especially at the end with Jezna, and we get our first look into Shadesmar in this book as well. And we're like, what the hell is Shadesmar? And that's how Jezna survives. And we get Je Shadesmar a little bit of point of view from Shalon at, at the boat scene, I believe. We get Urethiru and how you're able to open up Urethiru and this whole quest and how the ghost bloods were looking for what Urethiru was and the complexities behind that. We have the Parshendi, and there are so many interludes in here where we get a Shonai's perspective. I think the Parshendi are so well developed where we have the, the way they talk is so fascinating to me where they say um, they sp like spoke in derision. I believe, is that how he words it? Spoken derision or spoken, how they do that. And also how they have different forms, dull form, mate form, what is it, war forms. Yeah. And how they're exploring this new form, the voids. For, so they're amazing. And we have the new storm eventually with the, vo not just the storm and the storm father now, and not to mention Delinor bonds with the storm father and this whole ep epic climactic scene. We have yeah. the Delinor flashbacks with, where he goes back to the pure lake and we see the knight's radiance of the past. And then fighting mm -hmm. for humanity, then eventually the Day of Recreants. We have more interludes where there's now, we see now one of the heralds kills Yim. Yim, 
who I would not have remembered this at all. I definitely went back to the summary for this one. <laughs> but kills Yim, the cobbler, and we're wondering why now this Herald's looking out trying to kill all of these Knights Radiant. And we have the Queen, we have also different interludes with Teravangian, learning more about what he's doing, and the Queen back in Kolinar, and Rushy traders over there, learning about the different cultures and what's going on over there. We have more Heralds with Taln, which I said I was going to mention earlier, and mention later, this is where I'm mentioning later. Taln, yeah. who's gone completely insane and crazy. Honor, Cultivation, and Odium. We learn these, we learn more about each of these, and that will continue on in Oathbringer and so forth. Ultimately, and if this was just a score on stuff, like <sighs> largeness, I, I did I say like it's we get a lot of things. Like you're saying all the stuff that happens. You're listing things. I completely agree. It's a lot. It's a bunch of stuff. I'm I and most of it, by the way, was more magic system, which I do admit is really great. For me. <laughs> It's not just how big something is and how much there is there. It's a lot of the connections and through lines, how, how things connect to each other. I would say my biggest criticism, the reason why, is culturally speaking, I think it is lacking. That's, that's mainly why are the cultures the way they are. There's not much in terms of that. Like, why, are, why is the Alethi the way they are? Why are the Parshmen, like, you kind of get more with that, like, it's more genetic with them. But you don't get too much of it. Like, they've kind of been the same since beginning history. It, with a lot of it, it seems very stagnant. Like, there's a lot of stuff now. And then there was a lot of stuff then. Ha but from then to now, there's not much of a connection through line. And even now, I don't really understand why any pe any groups of people are different. That's what, what, what I mean. Is like, he's showing us a lot of stuff. Well, on why, or their connection to others how they've grown through their history. I don't see a lot of that. I did a lot of research to find all that. Did I do that for nothing? I'm saying, like, it's really cool. Uh, it's kind of, uh, what it, what would be? Like, if you told me, like, was... all these facts about a bird, all the stuff that it does. <laughs> what? Well, no, like, it's a bunch of little factoids. Oh, okay. And it's very interesting. There's a bunch of stuff that you tell me about what it does. Mm. And then I ask, well, what, what's the history of its evolution? And I go, well, it, you know, thousands of years ago, it used to be a fish, and now it's an elephant. That's actually a great. I, I'm kind of like. That's actually a great analogy, though, because evolution for the bird, five thousand years ago, like, there's to be the bird it is today. It hasn't changed much in five thousand years. Well, right? my point is like you see, like, I, I want to kind of see the growth from beginning to end, or at least. I feel like the world has been lived in outside of me reading it and that it is alive without me. That's what I get from you don't feel that, Lord of the Rings. I do not. Wow. It's alive when I'm reading it. And there's cool stuff ah. happening when I read it, but there's not much going on if I'm not there. Really? That's, that's kind of how I feel about it. The culture itself is pretty stagnant and it is the way it is because it's been written that way. Hmm. Not because, of course, that's the way it is. Because of all these things that happened in the past and how it's grown and evolved and changed. I don't get that feeling throughout any of the book. Like, the magic system is cool to read about. It's cool stuff. There's a bunch of stuff. Hmm. But I don't sit there and go, of course, that would be the way it is. It all makes sense because that's, that's how it evolves, how it's changed. Now, in all honesty, magic system-wise, we get a lot from that in book four. And I don't no spoilers. No spoilers. I want to say world building for me in book mm -hmm. four is a significant improvement because all the things I'm talking about, you do see that in book four. Mm. You do see some changing and evolving, and you go, of course, that's how things are going on, and it feels like the world starts being lived in without you, the reader. So mm. it's not solely about a bunch of stuff you show me. It's more about the feeling you get of how it's gotten there, how it's changed. And does it feel lived in when you're not around? Mm. Now, the best thing I would say from the comments, mm -hmm. uh, I think Adam said this one, by two things, two things. One, the fact that we get the whole world from these characters' point of view and we learn about the world as they learn about it affects what you know about what happened between the Desolations and today, and they're discovering more. It's not all going to be shown to you. Like Even with Alethkar, we do know... We know what our characters know. Dal Dalinar mm -hmm. and Gavilar 
conquested across the left card just like the sun was it the sun something uh, the sun maker i forget what his, his name was yeah. but he conquered left card like 300 years ago and the whole point is that th- this is what was known and then there were different there were different high princes throughout and then they united the high princes again so we know this through dalinar's point of view because that's what's necessary for us to know and from dalinar's point of view that's what he knows and he's also less read because he's men don't read or, or write in this world as much as so he we're learning a lot about that so jesna has a lot more knowledge and shallan's point of view has a lot more knowledge of what's going on in the world and i think you're we're definitely missing some main points here of gaps that happened i think the gaps aren't it's not laid out what happened decade to decade but there are points in history you could point to like with voronism and the day of recognition with the knight's radiance the heralds good there's big points in history you can go to that i think it's stringed together well and hmm. not just well for me, I think very well. And again, I I haven't read Wheel of Time, so I can't combat you with like what <laughs> Wheel of Time does differently than this book. But when I think of Roshar, the biggest disagreement I have with you, like I mm-hmm. can get your points. Preference wise, of course, if you give it a seven, something like fine, that's fine. That's still a good <laughs> score. The biggest disagreement we have is when you say it's not deep and you can't feel like Roshar's real, like it's not doesn't feel lived in. I I think it's very deep and lived in is why I give it such a high score. Hmm. I guess we disagree on that. We'll have to, we'll be thinking about it for book three. Is there any final things you want to wrap up in this book before we cut it off? Because I know this is going to be a long video for you to edit. Yeah, I, I just want to apologize to our viewers. Um, first off, for Richie's attitude. <laughs> no one's going to watch this whole thing. <laughs> no, second, because this, I don't know if people like when videos are this long. I know we do, because we can just talk our ears off. It's yeah. fun for us. I don't know if it's fun for everybody sitting down, listening to us. Well, the people that comment that, oh, yeah, we like it this long, you're the few. You're the you, few you that are actually, actually got through here. If you like long videos like this, by all means, let us know. We will do more. And if you made it this far, comment below, Richard is bad. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Richard is bad in the comments. You can put it in quotes, do whatever, just maybe in parentheses, whatever you want to do. <laughs> but if you made it this far, uh, thank you, <laughs> because... You're, you're so, I don't know how long this video has been, but it's long enough to where we should close it now. Yeah, and let us know what we can maybe change for the next video, what yeah. you guys think we should talk about uh, more specifically or less specifically for yeah, the third. Yeah, exactly. Third. Like, did we go too long on sections? Probably. Like, let us know what we did wrong here. There's probably a lot. So, right. we'll see you guys next week. Bye, everybody.